My name is Michael Fagan. I'm the president and the founder of Cubic Technologies. Today, I'm going to introduce to you LOMAR, or Laminated Object Manufacturing with Refill, a revolutionary fast line of 3D printers. With your participation, we are looking forward to its commercial introduction. The closest analogy to 3D printers among today's technologies that immediately comes to mind is ubiquitous computer printers producing images and text on demand. However, it is easy to forget another printing analogy which traces its lineage to a modest Gutenberg printer that has eventually evolved into the high-speed computerized printing presses of the present day. Within a few hours, these machines are capable of printing and collating thousands of newspapers and magazines for an entire city. Inspired by this analogy, the technology of the present invention will represent a significant step in moving 3D printing beyond its current functions of creating models, prototypes, and small batches of parts towards the era of 3D printer-based mass production. Cubic Technologies is developing additive manufacturing systems otherwise known as 3D printers, for producing three-dimensional objects of unlimited complexity out of thin plastic films, stabilized on removable carrier ribbons. Even though additive processes have made a significant progress over the rest, uh, recent years, they are not nearly mature enough to replace conventional manufacturing technologies. Layer-by-layer -layer printing of items is simply not possible today at the speed and scale required to replace casting, molding, machining, assembly, and other traditional manufacturing methods. Low speed of production of the existing 3D printing processes is primarily caused by their need to form each layer of the printed object sequentially on the top of the previously formed layer. On the other hand, the proposed LOM-R technology will uh, exercise a parallel approach capable of dramatically improving the speed of the process. The machine can perform cutting of, the, of several consecutive layers at one station while selective adhesive deposition is being performed at another. At the same time, the machine can do stacking and bonding of the new layers on the laminating platform. Lamar is going to be a proprietary technology covered by multiple patents. It's one of the few underexplored additive technologies on the market. It's a true pure play. The 3D printing market is growing rapidly and we aim to ride its wave. Due to the fact that LAM process forms its layers by cutting around their periphery, our technology is very advantageous at producing large parts rapidly. Therefore, we aim at creating the largest and the fastest industrial 3D printers with the lowest price per cubic inch of working space. We also aim at utilizing the available infrastructure of industrial color printers and sign cutters in producing color-enabled machines. This technology will also open the door to the development and marketing of proprietary sheet materials. This will be a lucrative, revenue-stabilizing segment of the company's business. The founder of the company, Michael Fagan, is a certified professional engineer with a Master of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from Illinois Institute of Technology. In the late 1980s, he founded Helesis, one of the pioneering companies in the field of 3D printing. In 1996, he took Helesis public on NASDAQ. Mr. Fagan authored five groundbreaking patents in the field of additive manufacturing. At the present time, the founder is looking for co-founders and additional team members, in particular, is looking for graduate and students and engineers with expertise in robotics or real-time computer control of mechanical systems. We are also looking for materials and software engineers who will help the company with its production and technological development. The machine that we envision is illustrated on this slide. It forms 3D object out of fabrication plastic ribbon, lightly adhered, to a carrier sheet. It also automatically removes waste material surrounding the formed layers of the object. On the top of the machine, there is an XY gantry positioning a laser beam or a knife, which cuts the outlines of layers of 
the three-dimensional object. Additionally, a syringe or printer head is carried by the same gantry and deposits adhesive within contours containing waste. The same gantry also prints color patterns onto the layers of the part. Once the material ribbon is advanced, the portions containing waste material adhere to the peel-off tape and are automatically removed by it. A stacking mechanism at the bottom of the machine automatically laminates the formed layers onto the platform until the entire 3D object is produced. The 3D printer market is projected to have the growth rate of 30%. Over the last three years, the desktop 3D printer market uh, was estimated to be 60,000 units per year, which is at about $2,000 uh, a piece, is a relatively modest $120 million market. Currently, industrial additive manufacturing systems and materials and services market is estimated to be $2 billion. By 2015, this market is projected to reach $3.7 billion level, and worldwide, by 2019, according to Wooler's Associates, it will eclipse $6.5 billion mark. Currently, MCOR Technologies is the only producer of sheet-based 3D printed products on the market. Their machines manufacture full-color 3D parts out of paper. The three largest companies in the additive manufacturing market are 3D Systems, Stratasys, they are located in the USA, and EOS located in Germany. Uh, they manufacture systems utilize it, utilizing powdered, solid, and liquid plastics. Some machines use powder metals as well. Their prices range between $10,000 and $700,000. There are also many types of consumer-oriented 3D printers, primarily relying on the fused deposition modeling process, which extrudes thin bead of plastics out of a nozzle. They, uh, the prime example of this type of uh, companies is MakerBot, which is selling products at prices ranging between $1,000 and $2,000. They have recently been acquired by Stratasys. We believe that due to the unique materials, the large size of the working envelope, high production speed, and low price of both industrial and consumer-oriented machines, our product will offer a strong competitive advantage. We envision three types of machines that our company will sell. Mid-range systems with three foot by four foot size parts envelope, which uh, will be sold for $15,000 and up to $50,000. Uh, our high-end uh, uh, and high-speed machines will be sold in the range of eighty dollars to $500,000. And our desktop system, which will produce two by three foot size colored parts, will be sold between $1,000 and $5,000. We also sell proprietary materials, which will cost to the company between two and five dollars per kilogram, and will be sold at the prices uh, from six to twenty dollars per kilo. The company will also sell annual service contracts, and it will operate its own service bureau, running small production runs for its customers. Cubic owns the source code for the LUM Slice software underlying the function of LUM machines formerly produced by Halasys. A sizable portion of the software can be utilized for our new product. We also own the design data for Halasys machines. Additionally, Cubic owns two Halasys machines, 2030H and 1015+, Plus, which will be used as platforms for building LOMAR systems prototypes. We believe that uh, two of Fagan's LUM patents are still active and could be renewed. Cubic has produced proof of the principal plastic part using one of the former Helices machines. We applied for the provisional patent covering new LUM technology. The company has refurbished LUM 1015 plot system for making a prototype of the newly envisioned product. We have submitted an SBIR proposal to NSF for $150,000 funding. Cubic has established cooperation with a potential manufacturer in China. The founder has contacted large 3D printer companies and service bureaus for potential funding and cooperation.
Cubic Technologies has reliable connections with the manufacturer in China, which may be asked to inexpensively manufacture our products. We have uh, also identified resources in the form of known manufacturers in U.S. and China who produce key components of the Advision machine. They include sand uh, making and knife cutting plotters, laser cutters, and large format UV printers. Our near-term objective is to raise $500,000. We will use these funds in order to build an automated prototype of our first product. While we have experimentally proven the feasibility of all the steps of the proposed technology, our goal is to merge them into a seamless automated process. We plan to accomplish this goal by either refurbishing a lump system that we own or by utilizing one of the industrially available printer cutter systems. Once the automated system has been built, we'll use it for initial marketing. Cubic will also use this machine in order to demonstrate the technology to the investment community for the next round of financing. The proposed budget will support personnel and operations costs for this crucial step in our commercialization program. We believe that our program is frugal, ambitious, and achievable. Our vision is to usher the era of tool-less mass production by developing radically fast, reliable, and user-friendly additive manufacturing technologies. While powder, solid, and liquid plastics-based machines exist in the additive manufacturing market, the sheet-based 3D printing processes remain underutilized. 20 years ago, our company and its predecessor Helices has pioneered sheet-based 3D printing technology. In the rapidly growing market of today, our mission is to explore, evolve, and commercially exploit sheet-based 3D printing processes and systems through optimal utilization of their technological advantages.